This video introduces the exponential form for complex numbers. So previous videos have shown how multiplication and division of complex numbers is easiest in the modulus argument form. They also showed that complex numbers can be considered as scaling and rotation operators. And the above results were derived, however, using rather tedious longhand um, multiplications with real and imaginary parts. This video introduces the exponential form for complex numbers. And once you've done that, you will see some of the results we derived earlier are actually rather obvious. Now, just as a note, we do not intend to prove the validity of the exponential form, and we'll leave this to the mathematicians among you. So some background. We've used complex numbers in two forms, real and imaginary, or Cartesian. So we've written things like z equals x plus jy. Or we've used modulus argument forms. So we've said things like z can be represented as r arg theta, where r is the modulus and theta is the argument. In this video, we're going to introduce a third form which subsumes the modulus argument form, by which we mean you can actually do away with this form in the future and use the third form because they are equivalent. So what result do we need? And you'll notice I've put it can be proved that I'm not proposing to prove it and we'll leave that for the mathematicians. Basically, cos theta plus i sine theta equals e to the power i theta. And you'll notice this warning here, angles must be in radians. So in other words, as theta goes from 0 to 360 degrees or 0 to 2 pi radians, then this expression is going to give us the unit circle. Why does it give us the unit circle? Well, it's very easy to prove that the complex number cos theta plus i sine theta has a modulus of 1. So we've given the proof here. We've said, what's the modulus of cos theta plus i sine theta? You can see it's the square root of cos squared plus sine squared. But we know that cos squared plus sine squared is always 1. And again, a note, we're not going to prove the expression we've given here. We're just going to use it. But this is a really important observation, one that you will need over and over again. So please remember it. So just as a closing the loop, let's plot the complex numbers below. So we've got e to the i theta equals cos theta plus i sine theta. What happens for these different values of theta? Well, if theta is pi by 6, then it will be relatively straightforward to show that the complex number you end up with, cos of pi by 6, will be this value here. And sine of pi by 6 would be this distance here. So you end up with that value there. And you can see the argument is pi by 6, and the modulus is 1. We could do 5 pi by 6. And that will put you out here, where this angle is 5 pi by 6. So that'll be cos 5 pi by 6 plus i sine 5 pi by 6. You could do pi by 2. And if you were, you'd end up with this point down here, where this is pi by 2. And again, if you want to prove that one, you could say, what's cos of pi by 2? Well, clearly it's naught. And what's sine of pi by 2? Well, clearly it's 1. So cos pi by 2 plus i sine pi by 2 just gives you i, which is this point here. We could do some others. Let's, for example, take this one here, minus 3 pi by 4. And you'll find that that takes you down here, where this angle is minus 3 pi by 4. So the key point here is to observe that this expression, e to the i theta, or cos theta plus i sine theta, describes the unit circle. So all those values are complex numbers on the unit circle in an argon diagram, where theta goes from 0 to 2 pi. Now, a reminder of some rules of exponentials. If you multiply an exponential e to the a by an exponential e to the b, you get e to the a plus b. Similarly, if you divide two exponentials, e to the a divided by e to the b, you get e to the a minus b. So those are well-known rules. Now let's see what happens when we apply this to complex numbers. So what have we got here? I've got e to the i theta times e 
to the i5. So two complex numbers, but with different arguments. And if I just use this rule up here, what do you get? You get e to the i theta plus phi. And what's the key thing there you notice? If you multiply two complex numbers, then the argument of the product is the sum of the arguments. What can you see? Theta plus phi. Now, I'm not going to do it, but you could equally show that the rule for division follows automatically from this exponential rule here. <coughs> so let's multiply a few complex numbers just to show that this works. So you'll notice I have to find x, y, and z in the exponential form. I want x, y. So I've got e to the i pi by 3 times e to the i pi by 2. And that's simply going to give me e to the i pi by 3 plus pi by 2. So you can see multiplying when you've got them in exponential form is very easy. What about x, w, y? Well, you get e to the i pi by 3 times e to the i pi by 2 times e to the minus i pi by 6. And that's going to give you e to the i into pi by 3 plus pi by 2 minus pi by 6. And I've just noticed a silly mistake here. That shouldn't say z. That should say w, obviously. Otherwise, we can't do it. And the final one, yw over x squared. So I'm just going to write this one straight down. So we've got e to the i. Now, y has got an argument pi by 2. w has got an argument minus pi by 6. The x squared, you'll notice, is in the denominator, so I'm going to subtract the argument, so I get minus 2 pi by 3. So you'll notice, in exponential form, doing multiplication and division is very, very easy. Now, what if we want complex numbers which aren't on the unit circle? Well, a more general complex number, we just add an r on the outside. So I've written z equals r times cos theta plus i sine theta, or equivalently, r e to the i theta. Now, what's the modulus of this complex number? Clearly, the modulus is going to be r, because the cos theta plus i sine theta, which we had before, just has a modulus of 1. So separating out here, this r gives us the modulus of the complex number. So the modulus of r e to the i theta is r. Now, this is a very key result, one that you need to remember, because you'll use that quite often. Now, what do we get from that? If I multiply together two complex numbers, here they are, r e to the i theta times b e to the i phi, I get r b times e to the i theta plus phi. And what do you notice? You notice if you multiply two complex numbers, then the modulus of the product, there it is, r b, is simply the product of the moduli of the original two numbers, r and b, which is the rule, the rule we derived in an earlier video. What else do you notice? There's an obvious link to the modulus argument notation. We've been using this notation here, r arg theta. And what you'll notice is if you use the exponential form, you write the complex number as r e to the i theta. So they're in fact equivalent. But r e to the i theta is a number. So you can actually use that, whereas r arg theta is notation, which represents something. So in the longer term, you may choose to get rid of that one and say, I'm just going to use r e to the i theta in the future. Right, just some demonstrations of some simple multiplications. So you'll see, again, we've given you a number of complex numbers, and we want to um, carry out some multiplies. And you'll see, very, very simple. x, y, I simply multiply the modul moduli, so I get 2 times 5. And then I do e to the i pi by 4 plus pi by 3. So you can see multiplying complex numbers written in exponential form is very, very simple. What about x, w, y? Then I get 2 times 5 times 4 for the moduli, and then e to the i pi by 4 plus pi by 3 minus pi by 2 for the argument. And the final one, y, w over x squared. I'm going to get 5 times 4 over 2 squared into e 
to the i, and then I'm going to get pi by 3 minus pi by 2 minus 2 pi by 4. So some conclusions. Multiplication and division of complex numbers, we've already done that, can be interpreted as scaling rotation, and we'll need that for many engineering examples. However, the key point here is if you express complex numbers in exponential form, then it makes this scaling and rotation mathematically obvious. Because what you can see is if I multiply complex number r e to the i theta by complex number b e to the i phi, I get a scaling of b and a rotation of phi. And we've also noticed that this new exponential form subsumes the form we were using earlier of r arg theta.